My name is Sean McKay, and this is Attack of the Honeysuckle, a narrated presentation on an invasive plant species called Lanicera macchiae, or commonly referred as bush honeysuckle. This presentation is your case brief for the next mission. It is broken down into three objectives, identification, a few tips of how to identify the target, I will also brief you on where it's commonly found and some lookalikes. We want to avoid friendly fire. The second objective is ways in which you can eliminate your target by chemical or mechanical controls. Lastly, prevention is the most important for the future depletion of this invasive species. This is a large deciduous shrub that typically ranges from 6 to 20 feet in height. It tends to have an arching growth habit, flowers are white aging to yellow, and bloom May through June. Red berries appear in late summer, ripen in late fall, and often persist throughout the winter. See all that green around you in early spring? That's a good chance that it's bush honeysuckle. The same goes for very late fall and early winter. This species is typically the last to drop its leaves. The leaves are two to three inches in length, opposite along the stem, and end in a sharp point at the tip. Here are some surveillance pictures I have taken while in the field. The top left is of a mature bush honeysuckle growing as an ornamental in a residential property. Deception is a common problem with these species. The general public think they are safe because it's, it has lots of pretty flowers and fruits. But behold, they are a breeding ground for birds to eat the fruit and disperse more of the enemy. As you can see, it is commonly found in woodlands and on its edges, dominating competition with native species. The last image is of the honeysuckle in the fall inside an urban condition. Other enemies, such as poison ivy, are also commonly found alongside our target and disturbed sites. Here are some easy to remember tips to make sure you have the correct target. Hollow pith, or the stem, bright red fruit, early leafing out, prolific flowering, opposite branching and leaves. That means uh, make the peace sign with your hand and the meeting of the leaves and branches look very similar. And also lightly pubescent or hairy leaves. These images are some look-alike plant species that should not be misidentified as the target. They would make great substitutions in place of the target. A less common native honeysuckle species, swamp fly honeysuckle, has yellow flowers in the leaf axils. Coral berry has similar opposite growth and entire leaves, but has a solid pith and coral to purple berries. Snowberry is, has a hollow pith like our target, but can be distinguished by its white fruits. Privets are also invasive species with opposite growth, entire leaves, but the flowers grow in clusters at the tips of the branches and have greenish black berries. There are multiple controls for the elimination process. The first one I will brief you on is the use of chemicals. An application made to pruning cuts at the base of the shrub at its crown with a solution of 20% glyphosate herbicide products, such as Roundup, in the fall is one technique. These chemicals cannot be used in environments with standing water, though, and may need multiple treatments. A foliar spray of 1.5% glyphosate solution can be applied to mature shrubs at, or 1% solution for saplings. Drift and runoff are the biggest concerns because this is a non-selective herbicide, killing anything in its path. There are no current biological controls known to this species, so mechanical means could be an option in small scale or controlled situations. Areas of prairies or meadows can be burned, killing any woody material, allowing the herbaceous plant material to grow the next year. Physical removal by pulling and digging the entirety of the plant and its root zone. The soil will then be susceptible for reinfestation or soil erosion, so replacement of native vegetation is imperative. Mechanical controls can be very costly due to labor and repeated maintenance. Prevention is the most important objective for a bush honeysuckle-free future. Roadsides offer an opportunity for improving ecosystems by establishing and maintaining native plant communities. Another large-scale effort is integrating invasive species management practices in forest management. This can be done with early detection in the following steps, identification, monitoring, early detection, rapid response with a combination of management controls. The use of containment is a strategy employed by the agricultural industry. 
The use of massive fields provides a barrier for the spread of our targets from areas of high infestation. Sadly, only three states with the U.S. have made efforts of regulation, including Vermont, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. You now have enough information to complete your mission. Remember, there is no one answer to this problem, but a conglomeration of many. This mission cannot be successively completed by yourself. Go out and share it with colleagues, friends, and family. It only takes one click of hitting the share button on social media to get the world word out there. If you would like to learn more about this topic from credible sources, I have listed resources local and national to assist you. Peace be with you.